Kevin Hunter with Dave Ford here on the Business Forum Show, and we're chatting about the business owners that participated in the 252% Profit Improvement Club over the last 12 months and the process that they went through. We've been talking about budget and cash flow forecast and the importance of uh, this item in your business. Today, we're going to move on to talking about measurables, and measurables are important because they show if there's a capacity and opportunity to accomplish the things that the business needs to do to succeed. Let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most businesses, you, uh, you know, I'll sit down and ask them, okay, so um, what's your average dollar sale? Well, my average dollar sale can range anywhere from 50 to 2,000. Yep, I get that. <laughs> what's your average dollar sale? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if your average dollar sale, if they can go anywhere from 50 to 2,000, but your average dollar sale is 1,500, that tells me you sell a lot of higher end stuff and you don't really sell much of the lower end stuff. Mm-hmm. If it can be 50 to 2,000 and your average dollar sale is 80 bucks, that mm-hmm. tells me that once you sold something for $2,000. Right. So it's understanding what's your average dollar sale, how many sales do you need. Once you understand, you know, you look at a budget and a cash flow, you figure out what's a break even for a business. Mm-hmm. How much money do I have to make every day, every week, every month to pay my bills? Then you can relate that back to if you know what your average dollar sale is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I know how many sales I need. Mm-hmm. I need know how many sales I need this month, this week, today. Mm-hmm. Okay. And once you know that, if you know, okay, so like I can look at, uh, I'll use a chiropractor for an example. So say a chiropractor needs to be seeing 60 patients a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. I need to see 60, 60 patients a week to pay my bills. Excellent. So how many new patients do you need to have in order to, in order to, to filter for that? How many new patients do you need to have in order to see 60 patients a week? How many of those are new because you need to continue building that? No, sure. so maybe they say we figure out based on their numbers. I need to see, uh, I need two new patients a week. Great. Okay. So where are those new patients going to come from? How many phone calls do you need to get? How many marketing things do you need to have? How many people do you need to? If you got two new patients that you need to get and actually have to come in, mm-hmm. does that mean you need to have two scheduled, or does that mean you need to have three scheduled because one of them is always going to cancel? Mm-hmm. Or you'll look at the chiropractors the other the other way is that you know they'll look at their number of patients and and what's a measurable how many patients are actually scheduled to actually come in that day. Mm-hmm. So what's their conversion rate to mm-hmm. scheduling the appointment and then actually attending the appointment? <clears throat> you can look at most businesses and figure out uh, what their measurables are as mm-hmm. far as uh, what do I need to sell or wh- what's what is what's the conversion rates on the appointments? You know, if you were to look at somebody in the uh, some of the trades industry, the trade industry, so you've got like a plumber or an electrician. Okay, so if they're going to do it based on, you know, hours they, mm-hmm. they typically a lot of them will charge you know like a 90 dollars an hour rate or at 100 dollars or 110 okay great so how many hours do you need to have to pay your bills mm-hmm. okay excellent so you need to have this many hours well we also would want to know what's your capacity so if you needed 60 hours of work every week to pay your bills and you're supposed to do the 60 hours of work you got a problem mm-hmm. especially if in order for you to do 60 hours of actual billable work you're going to have to work for 90 hours Yes, <laughs> because that's problem. because that's the other piece is <laughs> is it's not necessarily the case of one one hour of, of work that you get paid for and is really one hour of work. It might be an hour and a half, might be two hours. It all depends on the business. Mm-hmm. OK, so we look at the business and figure out for this specific business, what are the measurables that are going to tell me how they make money, mm-hmm. how effectively they're making money and what their capacity is to make money. Mm hmm. And when you look at, well, I need to hire somebody. How do you know if you need to hire somebody? Well, you know, I, I've got a, a, an architect we just started working with, and he's backlogged with work. Well, mm-hmm. you, you should have hired somebody a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So now it's a case of hiring somebody just to, so he can not lose work because he's losing work because he didn't hire somebody. Right. And he had some issues around hiring people. So we went through a specific process, and I helped him hire this guy. Um, that's working out great. And now he's looking at probably needing to hire somebody else here in another probably month or two months after this guy gets trained in. Mm -hmm. But we figured out based on the measurables, now we know this guy comes in, it's going to take two or three months. The expectation is your revenue should go up to this Mm -hmm. because this employee is now in. You're paying him this. You should be getting this return. What's the measurable? Mm -hmm. If you don't know those numbers, and I try to set it up, as simple as I can. I mean, I've got, 
you know, we've got clients that, you know, we know on a daily basis, they've got truck, they got truck, trucks running out delivering stuff. We know on a daily basis how much revenue those trucks are producing and what, and how much gross profit those trucks are making mm -hmm. just because we've got the KPIs. We've got the key performance indicators. We're tracking the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing the other part that you're going through with this measurable is when you even talked about the um, average dollar per sale is that, you know, let's say somebody has a $5 item in their showroom floor. They also have the 2000 business owners. A lot of times will tend to think that this bigger ticket item that they want to move their business towards them. And Correct. you see that happen a lot yep. because they're going, Hey, if we're generating $2,000 worth of revenue, that's, that's way more meaningful than $5 is, or it's way more meaningful than $80 is. And, I'm assuming in this measurable is you're also looking at what the cost of sale is Correct. for each of those because a $2,000 item might have a $1,980 cost associated with it where the $80 item might be have 15 bucks associated with it. Correct. Well, a really simple example. We work with a body shop that um, was actually, they were, <clears throat> they were backlogged with work. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to figure out, okay, so what's their capacity? Can they make any more money? How efficient are they? And we started evaluating the work that they were doing and they were doing either primarily either front end work or rear end work. Mm -hmm. And what we found out, I don't remember which one was the, was one of them was significantly more revenue than the other. It mm -hmm. was like three or four times more revenue than the other one. Okay. So we started looking at it and figuring out, well, what's the cost? What's the man hours that, that it takes to produce that? And what we found out was while this, while the, the one, and it's, we'll say it was the front end was significantly more revenue. Mm -hmm. It took them is it was three times more revenue, but took them five times as long to do it. Right. So they could produce five of the rear end jobs in the same time it could take them to produce one of the front end jobs. Mm -hmm. So when we broke it down to what was their overall profit per job, they had significantly much more potential for profitability if they focused on the rear end jobs as opposed to the big dollar front end jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find that out in a lot of businesses. They focus on, well, I got this big sale. I got this big sale. That doesn't necessarily mean you're making money. I mean, I've had one client where they had this huge contract, huge contract. Uh, it was like a $3 million contract over three years. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having to tell that customer to take the business somewhere else because it found out great. It's a $3 million contract. So that's why they took it because, hey, this is going to be a great deal. And after they started doing it and after they started building it, found out that $3 million contract was actually going to cost them about $4.2 million to, to provide. <laughs> yeah. So you can't lose that kind of money. Absolutely. So it, it's looking at, so we with that particular customer, we went back to that, um, with that particular client of mine, we went back to their customer and said, we can't build it for this anymore. We need to raise the price to this. Um, and, and with the expectation that they were going to say, no, we were going to go somewhere else. Okay, expect that. So they left. They took the business somewhere else, and like two or three weeks later, they came back. You probably have capacity now, right? Yep. Here, we got this new thing we'd like you to, to produce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ended up taking on something new that was only going to be about $2 million in revenue, so it was less in revenue over a three-year time span, but it was going to produce, it was only going to cost them about $800,000. Mm-hmm. Nice difference. It's a huge difference. So it, yep. it's, it's all in how you look at it. So going beyond these measurables then, there's also classes for education yep. that you put the clients through and they attend these every Monday night. Can every they, other Monday night. Every other Monday night. Yep. So they can do these either in person or can they Skype into these as well? Uh, they can. We've found that it doesn't have quite as much of an impact. We'll set up uh, like a, a, a separate one that where we do it uh, on a webinar. Mm -hmm. So they have a little bit more participation. When they Skyped in, we tried that. Um, it was just too hard for them to participate sure um so we'll do like a we'll set up a separate one and do it on a webinar if we've got people that, that want to come to the class outside of it so maybe we'll have half a dozen dozen people uh, on a webinar so that mm -hmm. they can actually then converse back and forth um the classes otherwise currently they're you know they're in our office on monday and every other monday nights and they're on different topics they're on marketing they're on sales they're on team they're on uh time management they're on you know your vision mission culture what's the purpose of your business uh, today tonight the seminar is on uh, is on systems mm -hmm. putting systems in place systematizing the business so you can rule out as much of that human error as possible mm -hmm. um, it's on leadership it's on it's on growth it's you know it's it's on measurables there's a whole class on nothing but measurables what are the measurables mm -hmm. in your business one of the reasons we do this is because you know I can meet with you and have conversations with you on a weekly basis 
basis, but it's really hard to give you all of that education. Plus then there's 20 people in the class, mm -hmm. other business owners. They start learning from these other business owners, somebody that's already went through this and that's done this. and Or they'll develop relationships, business relationships, where you've got, you know, them working together now because they're kind of partnership businesses, so to speak. They'll work together and help each other out. Right. Again, huge benefit. You know, we've got a contractor that now has a relationship with a plumber mm -hmm. that he didn't have before because of the classes. I was going to say, in the example that we were talking about before, um, having somebody to talk to, uh, in, in this case, when they not only have you as someone who's coaching them, it's somebody but now else they've now. joined an educational process where a, a number of businesses are involved. They find out it's not just them. Yes, and they have business people to talk to who know what they're talking about as well. Kevin Hunt with Dave Ford here on the Business Forum Show, uh, talking about uh, budget and cash flow forecasts and measurables in your business and uh, why they're so important for your business success. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening.